Okay, uh, all those packages finished downloading and installing. Uh, click no to take in a survey. And uh, so it's going to do a few more little things here. And that's going to bring up, uh, I think, next screen is going to be the uh, what packages do you want to install. And we're just going to choose a base system. There is an option to install uh, the GNOME desktop environment or GNOME or GNOME, however you want to say it. Um, and um, we're not going to do that for a few reasons. One, I, I don't normally recommend doing that even on a desktop computer. I recommend, you know, installing stuff as you need it. That's kind of just like a meta package. This is it right here. Um, so we're not going to choose any of these. We're just going to choose the standard system utility tab continue. Um, although we probably will end up installing that just for tutorials sake later on. But the reason we're not doing it now, we're going to do it later on, is because I want to create just a very basic Debian image that can be used for lots of stuff. Because um, this image we're creating won't not only run on uh, the Archos tablet, but it should run on most ARM devices. So I could put it on my cell phone and, and chur root into it. Um, if you have other, I've, I haven't done it myself, but I know that other uh, Android devices you can... Um, set up a chur root and chur root into an image file uh, which is a great way of doing things uh, if you can't dual boot um, so this image will actually be able to be used for a lot of different devices so I don't want to start putting too much in there right now and since we're going to even on the device it's going to be running as an image um, which is nice because we can back up that image anytime. We can say, okay, this is our default image. I'm going to copy that, and we'll keep on editing this other image. And if we decide we don't like what we did, we can just copy back the image we created. You can have it on your device. You can do a bunch of stuff. You can screw it all up. All you have to do is delete that image that you screwed up and copy over, and you're ready to go again. So I'm going to make multiple images based on different setups that I may want. Um, and I'm probably going to share most of them on my site. Once again, check the links in the description uh, for more information uh, on that and links to stuff you can download. Um, let's see, I was hoping this would go a little bit faster here. It's preparing the base system. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to stop the recording and start again when it gets to the end of that. Okay, uh, then you get to this screen, it says no bootloader installed, and that's fine because on ARM devices, the bootloader is actually, I guess, in the, the firmware. It's still going to use your, your boot folder, um, but the, the device should know already to look for that. There's no uh, bootloader installed on the partition itself, I guess. Uh, hopefully I'm explaining that right. Once again, the whole ARM thing uh, is kind of new to me. I, I've played with other people's images, but up until yesterday, I have not successfully made my own. Uh, and that's why I'm doing these tutorials, so that you guys don't go through the hakes I went through, trying to find the right images and stuff. Um, and the installation is complete. We'll click continue. It's going to want to reboot, but we're actually going to kill it before it reboots. Uh, let's see. It's unmounting the virtual file systems. Killing system request to reboot. For system rebooting, we'll just hit the X to kill out of that, close out of that. So here we are. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, the command we just ran. Uh, what do we do next? Well, now we want to boot into that Debian uh, distro we just uh, used. And the command's going to be very similar to this. And uh, if we go back to the tutorial page here from the arcos-debian uh, website, which is actually arcos-generations.com is the wiki, um, the next thing they're saying is after you install it, to, you know, to boot into it and install your GUI uh, um, interface. So first thing I'm actually going to do, since we have a base install of Debian right now, if we list this out, this is our device right here. What I'm going to do, or our device, our image right here, I'm going to copy uh, that Debian image to a file I'll call it Debian base. That way, if I screw anything up, I don't have to go through that entire install process again. I can start with this image. And once again, there'll be links to this file most likely in the uh, link in the description. I'll probably uh, zip it up so that it's not the full uh, three and a half, four gigs that it is. I think it's gonna, it comes out to be like 3.8 actually. Um, so next we're going to run this command. Only uh, there is one problem, uh, I think. No, there's not one problem. I thought there was a problem with that, but I think I just typed something wrong the other day. Let's see. We want to, uh, we've got 
our ARM, we're running QMU um, system dash ARM type of machine we're running. The kernel we're using, we're still using the same file uh, in the directory we're in. Um, oh, but this is the point where it's going to start looking for this file, which we don't have. Now, like I said, there was a link back at this uh, page here to go download it, but I had issues with the other image from that link, so I don't want to download it from there just in case. So what I'm going to do before we run it is that we need to mount this uh, partition, this image. Now, if it was just a one partition image, uh, we could use just the mount command. We can say sudo mount dash o loop and our Debian file and where we want to mount it. It would actually be debian.img. But since there's actually three partitions, uh, created when we did the install. One of them's a swap and the ones are operating system. I'm not really sure what the third one is, but I'm pretty sure there are three. Um, what we can do is QMU comes with a uh, nice little um, uh, tool for mounting some of these devices. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to say sudo mod probe ndb I'm looking at my notes here because I just found this the other day because I used to do it another way. You can use a program called parted to see where each partition is in bytes and then you can mount uh, with an offset of that many bytes and that will get you a mounted partition. But later on we're going to want to clone a partition so it's much easier to do it this way um, in my opinion. Um, so we're going to say, whoops, I'm not really sure. I hit tab to autocomplete. At least I thought I hit tab to autocomplete and it kind of did something funky there. Uh, probe, um, once again, ND, uh, MBD, max underscore part equals 63. And we're going to have to type in our password because we're running that as sudo. Um, so that, that's, that loaded a, a module, I guess. I'm not 100% sure. Someone can comment on that as well. I'm trying to explain as much as I know so you guys are educated, but once again, this is all kind of new to me as well. I've been using Linux for a while, but not as hardcore, I guess you could say. Um, so at this point, we can use qmu-nbd, which is a tool that comes with qmu when you install the package, dash c, and what we're going to say is device, forward slash device, nbd0. So basically this I don't know what NBD stands for, but it's kind of like uh, HDA or uh, a, uh, um, SDA. It's, it's, it's basically seeing that, that image now as a hard drive, or it's going to in a second, and it's going to be hard drive zero, a fake hard drive. Um, Debian.image, which is the image file we just created. So now if I list out devices um, NDB asterisk, you can see that we have MDB 0, 1 through looks like 15, but you can see the 0 has partition 1, partition 2, and partition 5. We want partition 1. That's where our operating system is installed to. So we're going to now say sudo mount, and we're going to mount our new little virtual device, NDB 0, P1, because we want partition 1. And we'll just mount it anywhere there's an empty directory, and my MNT directory is empty. It does not exist. I typed something wrong. It's MBD, not NDB. Now, if I list out what's inside that directory, it's what's in that partition, which is great. Because now we can um, go in to, if we go to list boot, you can see all the files in the boot directory, and hey, there's that file we need. We don't need to go anywhere and download it. When we install Debian, it installs this directory. And we can now copy that file to our current directory. So now I can list out. You can see it's in the directory here. So now that we have that, and once again, you can download it somewhere if you can find it. Uh, but now that we have that, we can go back to this website and grab this command, and we'll go over what it says. Uh, QMU system arm arm this type of device the kernel we're using and then this is the file we just pulled out of our image 
which by the way, this file's in there too. If you lose it, you can get it out of that image. The hard drive image we're using, once again, uh, 256 RAM. And then we're gonna create a root directory, which is our SDA1 uh, in our image here. And uh, we're gonna give that 256 megabytes. So I'm gonna stop recording there. Be sure to check out the next tutorial to see what happens. Visit filmsbychris.com. It's Chris with a K. Check out the links in the description for more information. Have a great day. Thank you.